In this video lesson, we're going to have a look at the properties of various parts of objects, specifically in the syllabus to do with bound controls. But every object and every part of an object has properties associated with it. Let's have a look at a form and switch to design view. And let's just look again at how to add a combo box for our county field. So we can select the control toolbox, make sure the wizard is on, choose a combo box, click and drag, decide which options we want to use in the wizard. I'm going to type the values in. I'm just going to put a couple of values in here. Oops, can't spell. Cumbria and Essex. Carry on through the wizard. Decide to store the value in the county field. And finally give a decent label to the combo box. There's our combo box. So when we switch to form view, we can use that box to choose which county for each record. Now, by default, I can also type into this box. I can type over the top. So you can see at the moment we've only got Cumbria and Essex. I can type Lancashire or obviously any other county and it will accept that value. The difficulty then is when somebody types in nonsense. As soon as they've typed in something like that, all your queries um, will fail to work. So it's a good idea to limit input to just the items that are in the list. And this is the first item that we'll look at on the properties. Now, if you remember, I told you that we can access the properties in form view as well as the design view. So I'm just going to get the properties now. And there's our properties. Make sure you've got the field that you're working with, the object or the control that you're working with selected. Once you've got that selected, the properties on the properties box are all about whatever it is that you've got selected. Now, there's lots of different tabs going across the top here. But basically, each one of these tabs is just a subset of what's in all. So if you know you want to do something to do with formatting, you can click on the Format tab and every property to do with formatting, that box is there. Likewise, Data. If you know you're going to do something with Data, then select the Data tab. Quite often, though, people select All. Now, I can't possibly tell you what every single one of these properties is about. You will find trainers will often tell you practice, have a play around, see what things do. This is one of those instances that I'm going to say that. Play around, have a look, try things out, see what they do. These all control the way in which the object that you've got selected works. And there's some really interesting ones. I'll just do the limit to list first to show how that works and we'll have a look at a couple more. So if we look down the list here, we've got a little bit further, a limit to list box. And that is selected at no by default. Let's change that to yes. We'll close the box down just because it's easier to see. We don't need to. Now, when we use the form, we can choose Cumbria. If we try to type over the top, as soon as we come out of that, it say no, you can't do that. It's not an item on the list. I have to select an item off the list. From that moment on, there can never be any spelling mistakes that will destroy the way in which your queries work. So that was the properties and limit to list. Whatever object you select will have different type of properties associated it with it. And there's some really interesting ones. I'm just going to mention one or two, and then we'll go and have a look at um, 
a unique values one in a query. You can change the name of an object. You can change the control source. So this one's linked to the counter, you can change it, link it to a different field. That can be really useful if you select the form as a whole by clicking on the form title. Sorry, not the title, actually on the, the area of the form. You can see we've now got form selected. You can see that it is connected to the properties table. Once you have a form created, you could change the table that it's linked to, the con record source, and then use file save as. And then you have a, a form that was created on one table, now linked to another table. Look back at our uh, option box and see what other properties we've got. So that was control source. Formatting, you can alter the formatting depending on what kind of field it is, how many decimal places, you can put an input mask on. Look here the where you could add another county into there if you want. So we could type in Lancashire there to add that to the list. That then becomes available in your list. Number of columns in the source. Column width, so I can change the width of the form of the of the um, object. Look at a few more. Number of rows. I can have eight rows of data before I need to scroll down when I click on the drop down arrow. Status bar help. I can type some help into there, and then when anybody selects that object, it then says help or whatever it is you've typed in to the status bar. There's loads of really interesting things down here for you to play around with. Default values. We could have a default value in there of Cumbria. So every time we go to a new record, it will be Cumbria unless we change it. Validation rules that we've worked with the tables, you can set them up on these control boxes. Lots of different properties. Have a look around. And remember, every single part of your form, query, table has its own properties. Get used to having a look at the properties, seeing what's available. I'm going to switch now to a query. We'll just quickly create a query in design view based on the properties table. And we'll just add in the town or city. You can imagine we've built up a complex query there with criteria in. If I select just on this grey area to make sure I've got the, the query itself selected, and not any individual object. Then when I do the properties now, it is the properties of the query. I click away and choose other things. That's now the properties of the field list. That's now the properties of the particular field that I've selected. So I want the properties of the whole query. And what we've got in here, again, a whole set of properties. I can select unique values. What that allows me to do is, in the query, only show values that are unique. It won't show duplicates. That can be a really useful feature. So there's lots of different, I can put filters onto my query, maximum number of records to show, all kinds of information that you can alter to make your queries, reports, tables of all behave in the way in which you need them to behave properties